What are the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepting one's dua? The fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspired you to make dua is a great sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer your dua. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to satisfy the hunger of an individual or quench his thirst, he inspires them to eat and drink. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to forgive an individual, he inspires them to do tawbah. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to have mercy on, indivi on an individual and grant them jannah, he facilitates good deeds for them to do in this dunya to allow them entry into jannah. And likewise, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to answer your dua, he inspires you to make the dua. And that's a sign and a mighty sign of the dua being accepted. Umar radiallahu an used to say, I don't worry about my dua being responded to. I worry about making the dua because if I've been inspired or guided into making the dua, I know that the response comes with it. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala said something very similar. He said, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants one the ability to make dua, he will grant the answer. Because if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't want to answer the dua, he would not have inspired him to make that dua. More important than the signs is the promises of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ud'uni astajib lakum. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also said, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَنْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't promise in vain, nor does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promise without a purpose, nor does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ever break His promises. So the first matter is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspiring you to make dua is a sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept the dua. There's other signs, and they're not in the Quran nor in the Sunnah. They're somewhat of an ijtihad by some ulama. Al-Shawkani rahimahullah ta'ala said they're tajribiyya, meaning they're derived through experience. So there's no proof needed, he said. Among the signs some ulama mentioned is that when one completes the dua, he feels deep awareness of the power and greatness and majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and one may experience crying or chills or trembling or fainting or even passing out and it'll be combined with the relaxation of the heart and a cool mind some said that one will feel refreshed and rejuvenated internally with a feeling of outward lightness as if, like, for example, a heavy load was taken off their shoulders. And let me mention a personal story pertaining to this. In the past many years, I've endured many trials, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. And there was one more serious than the others, very serious. I was only in contact with a handful of people. And I didn't even have a phone then. So a dear relative called someone else dear to me to let them know of the situation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve both of them and honor them and grant them the best in dunya and in akhirah. He told her how serious the matter is and the consequences and the threats. Later on, she informed me that when she got the news, she felt as if a mountain fell on her chest. The following years after that, the matter intensified. And it appeared to get worse. No one would have imagined a way out. And nearly every other day, sometimes daily, sometimes multiple times a day, she would give the most confident oath by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they will not do nothing. 
And as she said, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, alhamdulillah, thumma alhamdulillah, the matter passed just like a passing cloud. And here's the point. Everything was against us. Everything was against me. Yet she was so confident. Allahumma barik lah. She was so sure. She said when she got the news, she began to make dua. And the bed was in front of her. She said she either passed out on the bed or maybe it was slumber or maybe fell asleep. But when she woke up, she said she felt like that mountain was lifted off her chest. And she was confident since then. Then she began to mention some of the signs she felt after the dua. She mentioned so many of the ones I just mentioned that I asked her, did you ever read a book on this? Did you ever research this? She said, never. In addition to what Ashokani said, many of the signs can be deduced or inferred from general proofs. For example, the dua of the muttar. One who sincerely makes dua while he's in distress. The dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specifically promised he will answer. The dua of a person who's drowning or like a person who's drowning. The dua of one who feels alone and helpless and that no one can help him but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aside from the general promises that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers dua, this is among the matters that there's a specific promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pertaining to it. In fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered the kuffar in distress. That type of dua, usually, that type of dua, usually contains many of the signs that we mentioned, like tears, chills, possibly passing out, due to the nature and circumstances of that kind of dua. Due to the dire situation that one is in. The dua is usually also combined with thiqa in Allah and yaqeen and in truthfulness and sincerity. Which are essential conditions for dua to be answered. When the kuffar makes such a dua, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ They invoked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with pure faith in him. Then after one truly leaves the matter to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after he's done with the dua, he leaves it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to handle, he'll feel as if the burden has been lifted off his shoulders. The dua of the muttar was merely an example. Just an example to show how we can derive some of the signs from certain situations of dua. But it doesn't have to necessarily be someone drowning. It could be someone drowning in the trials of life. From the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that at times he may inflict someone with trials so that they can better their dua and work on their dua. And then they will make the dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer. Some may leave the hardship with a pleasurable bond with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through, du through dua. Some may remain in the difficulty. But they've attained a bond with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through dua that they forgot their initial issue that they that caused them to start making dua. The bottom line is the answer from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is guaranteed if a Muslim puts the required effort into that dua by meeting the conditions of the dua and refraining from what prevents dua from being answered. For example, a small example, how many supplicate and make dua with a careless, heedless, inattentive heart or a heart that's occupied in dunya matters while they're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ar-Razi rahimahullah ta'ala said that uh, it's by ijma, it's by ijma, it's by consensus that the dua from a person with a heedless heart has no effect. Put your effort and leave the result to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
how Allah answers, when Allah answers, where, that's not our business. You left it to Allam al Ghuyub. You left it to the one you trust in. What's requested doesn't have to be given at the exact time that you ask, nor in the same form. Sometimes the dua may be answered in the same essence of what you asked for. Sometimes evil will be averted from an individual. Sometimes it may be stored for a believer in the akhirah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows which one suits us best. How many were desperate in life for something at one point? They probably made extensive dua for it. But as time passed by, they think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they never got what they asked for. A wife or a job that one may be desperate for at a certain time may be what wounds one's dunya and akhirah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala either saved them from it or gave them a better replacement. 